Greetings. Welcome to Crossroads Baptist Church for our January 12th, 2022 midweek devotion. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with me this evening for our Wednesday midweek devotion. This is our first devotion of the new year, and I pray that it finds you doing well. Before we get started, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's be mindful of our church family uh, and friends of this ministry here um, who may be um, sick this week, battling flu symptoms and even more serious uh, ailments. Let's uh, take our request to the Lord in prayer as he encourages and quite frankly demands us to do. Let's be mindful of the ministry here at Crossroads and those who support it and help promote this gospel ministry that we would be effective and, um, and diligent with the task that has been placed before us. And I just want to thank you for joining me today. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I want to thank you for loving your people, dear Lord. And I want to thank you for your great hand of protection and your mighty hand of all knowing that is around each and every one of your your children, dear Lord, and we thank you for the great call that we have accepted and heard, dear Lord, that has washed our sins white as snow, dear Lord, and has given us the opportunity or has given us the promise of life eternal in heaven, dear Lord, and we thank you for that. Lord, I pray for this congregation here at Crossroads Baptist Church and for those who may be listening, Lord, that it would uh, this word would bless the hearer of the word, dear Lord, and Lord, I just want to pray a special prayer for those who are sick. Lord, we, we are, we're having this, uh, this great movement of sickness, dear Lord, among our people and throughout our state and country, dear Lord. And I pray especially for, uh, for those, dear Lord, who are battling through um, flu symptoms, dear Lord, that you would strengthen those, dear Lord, those who are in the hospital and rehabs, dear Lord, that you would encourage them, dear Lord, of, of better days at home, dear Lord, that are to come. And Lord, those who are facing more serious ailments, dear Lord, we pray a special prayer for them. Lord, I pray that you would bless this word as it is presented, dear Lord, and let it touch our hearts, dear Lord, as only you can. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have your Bibles, John chapter 3, whenever we think about John chapter 3, we think about John three sixteen. We know that verse very well. We know it by heart. We teach our children that verse at a very young age. And one thing I want to, in, in, in a, 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 a John style of writing, uh, we have the Gospel of John, we have the book of Revelations, we, 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 we see some intriguing thoughts and intriguing direction from the Holy Spirit that John gives us. But one thing I want to spend a little bit of time with you, I'll be very short today for this midweek devotion, is the difference between condemned and not condemned. And for John chapter 3, a lot of times we think of John 3.16 as the, the main verse of this chapter. But I want to encourage you to dig a little bit deeper. and Look at verse 18 with me. Whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. If there is a theme, if there is a thesis, a main verse, we find it for John chapter 3. We find it here really in, in verse 18. But I want to go a little bit further down and look at two other verses at the conclusion of this chapter verses 25 and 26. The Father loves the Son and has placed everything in His hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. A lot of times there's a great misconception when we read these scriptures. Just as we, we touched on Sunday morning here in our worship service, we talked about the great rest that God gives His people. Not a rest that we have to wait until we die and go to heaven to enjoy, but a rest that he gives people today, his followers, Christians, that we can rest upon his word, that we can enjoy the, the protection and the life everlasting that he gives us, and something that even in life eternal that we can look forward to. And chapter 3 ends with a great emphasis or a restatement of the main verse, which is verse 18 in my opinion, where he tells us whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is already or stands condemned already. So in other words, what we have to um, digest here is believing in the Son gives us life eternal, not necessarily <clears throat> exclusively to life after death, but life now as we know it. We can enjoy life, or a, a zoan is, is the Greek translation here, 
or Zoe, many times we hear it's pronounced, that we can enjoy life now and it contains a present element or a present tense of what he's talking about. And it does not just, is not exclusively talking about uh, the future dimension or life after death. The sense here is that salvation for the believer is ours already and we can enjoy that life that he gives us now through the blood of Jesus Christ, this great assurance we read about in 1 John chapter 9 through 12, we see it there. But we need to be reminded of the consequence or the condemned part of these verses. The, the, those who disobey or those who refuse to believe in the Son, the result is that they are not enjoying life as God intended it, and they're not enjoying the gift of salvation that Jesus Christ died on the cross for every human being who has lived or whoever will live. Instead, the wrath or the anger of God continues to remain on them. It is a crucial perspective that we have to draw out of these verses that tells us that John tells us that we should not be straddling the fence with God that we're reminded from, from conception, from birth, we are under God's wrath. We stand condemned already. But for those who believe in him, that wrath, that judgment is relieved from the believer, the Christian. The pod, Without a positive decision or an acceptance of the Son, Jesus Christ, we do not stand a chance as human beings to experience life eternal now or even after death, that God intends for us to enjoy. They continue, those who do not believe, those who do not accept Jesus Christ, as we were before we accepted Jesus Christ, they continue and they stand under the anger or the condemnation of God, God's great judgment that people are under even today. A great misconception is that all this God's anger or God's wrath begins only after death for those who do not accept. But that is not true because Scripture tells us whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already in the present tense even now, even as God intends for us in the present tense to enjoy life with him. That's what gives the Christian their, their zeal, their joy, their overcoming attitude. John Edwards, I had to do a, um, a big paper on him not too many semesters ago. And this, these three verses are the main text which we, he drew his, his famous sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. It was this statement here that drew Jonathan Edwards to, to the conclusion that God is not prowling around as 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 talks about when he talks about Satan prowling around as, as if one to devour and destroy us. No, that is not the, uh, the, the example that we should draw from this. What we should see here is that God is merciful. He is being patient with those who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But the anger and wrath of God has to be stated and it has to be absorbed that the biblical writers express that there is a, a problem, and the problem is sin, and God, Romans chapter 1, verse 18, is intolerant to sin, and no sin will ever enter heaven. We remained condemned to the sin and the wrath and the judgment of God up until we gave our life to Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God will not tolerate any inkling or any form of sin. We read that through John's writing in the book of Revelations. Turn to chapter 21, around verse 7 and, 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 and on down. You'll begin to, to get that, that concept that sin in any form is not tolerated by God or in the kingdom of heaven. Thus is the great reminder through John's writing of God's wrath and God's judgment and God's anger toward sin. There are many people in the world today who would like to think that we're in a fairly acceptable or fairly good relationship with God as long as we haven't done something big to offend God or something 
very wrong. But the biblical writers, through the inspiration of God's Holy Spirit, remind us that we are condemned except through the blood of Jesus Christ. People without Christ in their basic commitments are saying no to God and yes to sin. Thus is the great reminder. Thus is the ministry of Crossroads Baptist Church as we have accepted from our Lord Jesus Christ of the great commission to go and tell others about Jesus and let God's Holy Spirit do the work to draw man to him. John's writing reminds us of the, of the rejection that man has toward God, that many still reject or disobey what God has entailed or wants us to, um, to do, which is accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. There's something very positive about these verses. We can't just talk about the condemnation and the wrath and the anger of God. But the reverse of the sinful nature of man is to be accepted into the family of God, and you can only do that through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thus means we've overcome the state of condemnation by believing in God's one and only Son, which is re repeated in verse 18, as we saw in verse 16, which we all know very well. Failure to do so, Failure to do so is not to be condemned, but it is to continue in condemnation. We're already the, the sinner, the unrepentant sinner, those who have not accepted Jesus Christ. They're already in condemnation. Keep in mind, we were there too as believers. We were in that fallen state, but by the blood of Jesus Christ, we have come out of that state of condemnation. So it is not something that will happen at death, though judgment will take place. It is a, a condition which we were born into and can only be reprieved or relieved of that condition by the blood of Jesus Christ. We might escape the wrath of God. Look at verse 36. And we can only do that by God's one and only Son. Look at what he says. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. This is present tense. We're enjoying present life with Jesus right now. We're enjoying the security of life eternal in heaven. We're, we're, we're enjoying, as I like to say, the security of the believer by giving our life to Jesus Christ. The word wrath we find at one time in the Gospel of John, but yet we find it six or seven times depending on what translation you're looking at in the book of Revelation. So this is something John is not tiptoeing around, he intends for us to understand that there is a great parallel between condemned and not condemned, and there can be no riding the sense or no neutral spot with Jesus Christ. We're either one or the other. We either accept him or we reject him. And everlasting life does not simply mean the life in heaven, but it is something that we can enjoy today. I tried my best <clears throat> To, to instruct our congregation Sunday that we can enjoy God's rest right now as believers. All the anxiety, all the, the confusion, the sickness, the uncertainty, the bare grocery shelves, the economy, the world, rumors of war, border fights, invasions, occupations, all this can weigh so heavily even on the believer as humans we are but we can enjoy a rest that only God can give by the assurance that we have been, the price has been paid for our sins, and no matter what goes on in this world today, it did not catch God by sur surprise. The believer, you and I today, who have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we possess life eternal right now, and that is the life that God gives the believer, and the opposite of that is eternal death and wrath of God. A person does not have to die and go to hell under the wrath of God. John 3, 18, he that believeth not is already condemned, but he that believeth is not condemned. What a great reminder, what a thesis for chapter 3 of, of the book of John, and we need to be reminded of that today. The verdict you know, it's many times we hear preachers talk about a courtroom setting when we're talking about different scriptures. In this context, I don't like to think about it as a courtroom setting because a lot of times in a courtroom setting, we don't know what the verdict is going to be. 
we, we, we hire lawyers and we petition our case and we, we make our stand and we call witnesses in to, to, um, to give testimony to try to sway an opinion. But the verdict is already given and, and, and John reminds us of that, that those who know Jesus Christ are not condemned. Those who refuse or reject him are already condemned. So we see here that the verdict is already given, but God, in his great mercy, in his long-suffering uh, characteristic, in his patience, continues to call sinners to repent, 2 Peter verse, chapter 3, verse 9. There is still opportunity for the lost, and that is why we continue to preach the gospel today. It is amazing text here. It is an amazing uh, relationship that we can have a living relationship right now with Jesus Christ through new birth for those who will accept and have been called. We can enjoy that and be part of the family of God. It is a living relationship with Jesus Christ and it is a loving re relationship. Many times he is referred to as the bridegroom and we're part of that bride. Just like John the Baptist, we desire that Jesus Christ increase in our life and we decrease, that we would become more like him, more, more characteristically like him. We would love more, we would serve more, we would witness more, and by that we would receive his honor and his glory in our life. It is a learning relationship, it's a loving relationship, it's a lasting relationship, and it is a learning relationship living relationship. We continue to learn more about him. That's why we encourage church attendance. Even today, we encourage church attendance that we can meditate and delight and, and live in God's word and have a growing, living relationship with him. But we must never forget the cost of these blessings that God has given us. And I'm going to close with this. For us to be born into the family of God, Jesus Christ had to die. He had to die to provide an opportunity that that condemnation that we're already under can be, can be forgiven, can be relieved and lifted off the believer. For us to enter into a loving relationship of salvation, he had to die. He had to endure the hatred and condemnation of man. He was lifted up on a cross that we might experience forgiveness and that we might experience eternal life. And may we never take that for granted. And I want to close with this verse right here. Still in John chapter 3, verse 30. He must increase, but I must decrease. Lord, be more part of our life. Lord, I pray that we, we, we give up more control of our life and allow you to direct us and lead us in the way you'd have us to go. Lord, make us more like you, more loving, more giving, more caring, more understanding, dear Lord, with, with people who are, who are hard to understand and hard to get along with, dear Lord. We're living in the last days. Church friends, visitors, do you see that? We are living in the last days. Let us be more like Christ. And to the non-believer, to the one who does not know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, I encourage you today to come to know him through the blood of our one and only son, his one and only son, Jesus Christ. Let's close in prayer. Lord, thank you for this great reminder, this great testimony of scripture this evening, dear Lord. Remind your people of the importance to live life in the, in, in the salvation of Jesus Christ. And for the non-believer who, who still stands condemned today, dear Lord, I encourage them, Lord, to seek you while you still can be found. Lord, thank you for blessing this ministry at Crossroads Baptist Church. Thank you for those who support this ministry. And Lord, I pray for our sick and elderly, dear Lord, and for our church as a whole. And I ask all this in the wonderful name of Jesus, the name that saves. Amen. Thank you for joining me today.